A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war with you? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not, but you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. there and began a journey through Galilee, but he, he was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him, and three days after his death the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum and once inside the house, he began to ask them, 
What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst. Around who the gospel of the Lord. This is the second of two consecutive Sundays where we listen to Jesus predict his passion and death. If we recall last week's gospel, we might remember Peter's reaction to Jesus' prediction. We heard, then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. There is a rebuke and another rebuke. Today's reaction is more muted. They did not understand the saying we hear, and they were afraid to question him. Then Jesus asked, What were you arguing about along the way? but they remained silent. This occurs in the chapter following last week's account. So in just a matter of a few verses, the disciples go from rebuking Jesus when hearing the prediction of his passion to silence and confusion. Placing these in the context of the entirety of the, of the Gospels, we should not be too surprised at these reactions. We might be disturbed at Peter's boldness in rebuking Jesus, and we might wonder how the disciples can remain so silent after Jesus shared such heartbreaking news. But these accounts illustrate two of the... Again, reactions to Jesus vary and are many. There is awe. There is excitement. There is confusion. There is joy. There is anger. There is sadness. There is silence. There is action. There is lethargy. There is despair. There is commitment. There is confidence. Jesus' preaching and teaching results in every possible reaction there can be. But one of the advantages we have as we reflect on the Gospels, as we listen to them time and time again, is that we have heard all this before. If we are hearing them, we know Jesus will suffer and die. We know that he will to heaven. We know that we put ourselves in the shoes of the disciples hearing these words for the first time, we too are challenged to reflect on what our reaction to Jesus is. What then is our reaction? To these words, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. Do we call Jesus aside and rebuke him? Do we react? Or do we 
he allowed Jesus' words to be moment. Last week, Jesus said that in order to follow him, we must take up our cross. We must deny ourselves in order to live. Today, Jesus said, my children, Jesus outlines a one child such as this. me receives not me but the one who sent me so what is our reaction to Jesus much of what he tells us is difficult to hear it is not surprising then that when told Jesus would suffer and die that Peter would rebuke him or the crowd would be stunned into silence they simply did not want to hear or accept such a thing. When Jesus healed the sick on the Sabbath, the reaction by the authorities was swift and negative. When Jesus preached in his home synagogue and said the words and said that the words of the prophet were being fulfilled at that moment in their midst, the townspeople, those who knew him and his family, wanted to throw him off the cliff. We have heard the words, love one another for centuries, and still people do not heed that command. Yet through the sacrament of marriage and through the anniversary such as we celebrate, that love for others is the foundation of our faith, the foundation of our life. He constantly reminded of what Jesus tells us to do. How do we react to this? What do we do when we hear that we must love one another? What do we do when we hear we must be humble? What do we do when we hear we must become like little and accept? do we do when we are told we must take up our own crosses? What do we do when someone asks us to help carry their cross? What do we do when we are told to forgive and to have mercy? All these are the words of Jesus. We could go to the Buddha who said, however many holy words you read, however many you speak, what good will they do if you do not act upon them? How then do we react to the words of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, let us now profess our faith by praying together. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
all those things, things are visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God. God, Father, God, God, from God, God life from light, from true God, God from true God, God. God not made, substantial with the Father. In him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of Virgin Mary, Mary and became, became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. from the Father and the Son. Spoken to the prophets. Even one holy church. Confess for baptism, for the forgiveness of sin, and look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God for all things, let us seek his help for our church and for our world that the church and its leaders will model servant leadership. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all elected officials will strive to live lives of service to the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all children, especially those orphaned and hearts, where they can experience love and peace as they grow, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all teachers will receive their students as Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For our newly wedded couple, Morgan Mays and Richard Battistoni, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The sick, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, God's we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died will re be received into loving We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions for which this Mass is offered, Esther Romano, Francis de Glucoki, Mary Olson, Fred Hilgart, deceased members of the Marzullo family, Giovanni Sasso, Rosalia Zagone, Louis and Juliana De Prado, and deceased members of the De Prado family, Rosario Riello, fourth anniversary, Jaskierski family, Stanislaw Eufen, Dennis Smith, Norb Zick, Frank Pudlow, Grace Ciara, Carl and Frank Baldassara, Solomon Guerrero, birthday, Guerrero, I'm sorry. Rafael Diaz, Mark and Nicole Haroma, 25th anniversary, and Fearson families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hearts, actions spoken and non-spoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty, hear our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim. Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. He took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. To him, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Theodore Guerin, with St. Celestine, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, your glory. Almighty is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And Deliver us from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us show some sign of peace to one another.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those participating in today's liturgy via live stream, please bow your heads as I read the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <clears throat> Please join in singing in the Garen Songbook, number 934, the body of Christ. Come Share the Lord. In Garen Songbook, number Christ. 934, the body of Christ. <clears throat>
sacrament that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So you please be seated for a few minutes. Today we uh, celebrate, we call the Catechetical Sunday. So we pray for all the catechists, for our teachers, for those who teach in the faith, to our children and also to the adults. So I would like to invite all the teachers and catechists, please come forward so we can give you a blessing. So all the catechists and the teachers, and for all the parents, that's okay. So I would like you to come up, please come to the altar. and pray loving father we pray today for our catechists we thank you for the gift of ministry in your church grant them your wisdom that they may grow in the understanding and teaching of the your word grant them also your love that they may be fruitful heroes of your word and lead others to love you pour forth your holy spirit upon them to grant them wisdom about what is important, knowledge of the truths of faith, understanding of their meaning, right judgment about how to apply them in life, courage to persevere even in the face of adversity, reverence before all that is sacred and holy, and that love in zeal which leads other to a transforming encounter with your Son. And we ask this to Christ. All the sacrifice with them. I'm sure we have something for them. Thank you. Sacrifice as volunteers. A lot of power to teach our children, so appreciate all their hard work. Thank you very much. <laughs> For being here, he's a good friend with uh, Nicole and Mark who celebrate the 25th anniversary. So congratulations to you for your 25th. And Father Dennis will be the blessing. <laughs> I'd like to invite Mark and Nicole forward. Before continuing with uh, a uh, blessing on your 25th anniversary, I have a surprise. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so each of your children wrote a little, a little note. And of course, guess who coordinated this? At least, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, so um, so uh, at least just asked me to read. Um, this, so this is Mark's. <laughs> this is Elise's. <laughs> Are we surprised? No, not at all. Okay, dear mom and dad, thank you for to be the person. I have a bright future for the opportunities you get. love, Mark. So that was sent to me at about 10 in the morning. <laughs> Dad. And I an endless amount of love and but each other is stronger. Thank you for setting such a loving and beautiful example of what love is in our lives. From the laughs that the two of you share, the memories that you have made with each other as well as with Mark and I will forever be cherished. I idolize the both of you and all your hard work that you put into life. And sometimes I wonder how I got so lucky to be your But with a little, <laughs> but with a little teamwork and a whole lot of love, 
You raised me into the person I am today. And for that, I cannot thank you enough. I love you both so very much. So let us call upon the mercy of God, the Almighty Father, who in his most provident plan willed that the history of salvation be signified in marital love and fidelity. Holy Father, who are called faithful, requiring and rewarding the observance of your covenant, be pleased to fill with your blessings these, your servants, Nicole and Mark, who celebrate, who celebrate the 25th anniversary of their marriage. Holy Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit enjoy from eternity perfect oneness of love and communion of life and communion of love, grant that these your servants may always remember and faith and faithfully keep the covenant of love they made in the sacrament. Holy Father, who in your providence order all the experiences of human life, so as to lead the faithful to share in the mystery of Christ, grant that these your servants, serenely accepting both good times and bad may strive to cling to Christ and live for him alone. Holy Father, who will that the partnership of marriage should be an example of Christian living, grant that all married couples may be witnesses in the world to the mystery of your son's love. And O oh God, in whose plan family life has its firm foundation, hear with compassion the prayers of your servants, and grant that following the example of the Holy Family, they may praise you without end in the joy of your house through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Just a few announcements. Uh, save the date on October 3rd. Our Bishop Birmingham will celebrate the 11 a.m. Mass at St. Celestine for our third anniversary as St. Mother Theodore Guerin Parish. Join us for Mass and light reception afterwards. The Pastoral Center's new office hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. until 8 p.m., Friday, 8.30 a.m. until 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. The Respect Life Committee meets on Monday, September 20th at 7 p.m. in the Pastoral Center. New members are welcome. See page 7 in today's bulletin for more information. The Women's Club meets on Thursday, September 23rd at 7 p.m. in the Annex. All women of the parish are welcome to attend and may bring their own bag, dinner, snack, beverages, and St. Celestine's Lector forms this weekend. Blank forms are available in the minister's room. Thank you for your hospitality here this morning, and I thank especially Father Paul for his uh, welcome, and congratulations once again to Nicole and Mark. My trip up here began with a wedding last Saturday, and it's ending with an anniversary celebration. So, so that's a wonderful book, bookends. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Now let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song... Um, we are called to serve. It may be found in the Guerin Songbook, number 919. In the Guerin Songbook, number 919.
So 